hi everybody. Uh, I'm really glad to have you here. What every Java programmer should know about strings. So you're not interested, at least in the moment, uh, about new tool or framework or library, but you want to have a look behind the scenes uh, how OpenJDK engineers um, improve uh, the JDK. They don't improve it one time, they improve it from release to release to release. And we will have a look, uh, not at the JDK as a whole, but in such boring things like strings. And uh, I want to show you what intern strings are, what compact strings and compressed strings are, and what string deduplication is. And at the end, I will show you what indify string concatenation is. My name is Bernd Müller. I'm a professor of uh, computer science at um, Ostfalia. This is an um, university of applied science in German. Uh, it's a um, Fachhochschule. And uh, it's located in Wolfenbüttel. And maybe you know Wolfenbüttel already because it's also the home of Jägermeister. So um, usually I'm uh, working in uh, Enterprise Java, but today I will uh, tell you something about um, strings. So you're already here, so I don't have to motivate you, but um, we are not alone. There is um, a, really, a really good book, Java Performance by Scott Oakes, and there are um, sections about strings inside this book. There is another book, Optimizing Java, from Benjamin Evans. And there are also, there's a bit delay, uh, there are also um, sections about strings inside this book. And uh, also a third book, uh, Quality Code. It's only about, uh, only, it's about testing, how to write uh, really good tests, uh, by Stephen Vance. And um, there is um, a complete chapter about strings. So strings are not uh, as, as trivial as uh, you eventually uh, think. So it's um, important to know how strings work internally. So before I will tell you something, uh, you have to tell me something. So don't be shy, your Java developers, raise your hands. So if you think about a string and you know uh, and you look at a single character inside the string is it one two or four bytes or some uh, sometimes uh, two or four sometimes one two or four bytes so don't be sh don't be shy uh, raise your hands one byte a two bytes b four bytes c Two or four bytes. One, two or four bytes. So um, two bytes was right till Java 5, I guess. Then two or four bytes. And uh, after Java 9, one, two or four bytes E is right. So I will show you in a few minutes uh, the reason behind this. Okay, first, uh, first heading, string pool and string interning. So probably some of you will already know what uh, intern strings are. Um, I will show you some, some code later on and uh, hopefully also these guys will, will learn something new. So um, Java is defined by uh, a language specification, more than 800 uh, pages of PDF, a JVM specification, more than 600 uh, pages of PDF, and um, the Java doc of, of more than, I guess, 6,000 classes. And all these three uh, parts together define um, Java as a platform. And in the language specification, there is uh, a section string literals. And there is written that string literals are in turn as to share unique instances, which means that string literals are singletons inside the JVM. So if you have um, thousands of classes with uh, hundreds of same string literal inside this class, all these literals are in the bytecode, but when they get into the JVM, uh, the JVM will create singletons. So 
each string is only one time in the JVM. Not only string literals, but also uh, constant expressions. And I will show you in uh, an example what constants uh, expressions are. Okay, and the the algorithm, the mechanism, which uh, loads all these literals from bytecode in into the JVM, and how these um, interning uh, takes place is written there. But because uh, specification is, is uh, no pleasure to, to read and it's uh, much too uh, much uh, text on a slide, uh, so I, I um, give you a, a summing up. So all intern strings are stored in a string memory pool. And if a class gets loaded into the JVM, the JVM checks if this literal is already in the pool. And then uh, the, the reference points to this instance. If it's not already in the pool, it gets into the pool. It's in the inserted into the pool. And the reference points to the newly inserted uh, instance. So the result is each string literal is a singleton inside the JVM. It's important to know. You can read the specification as uh, I did uh, one slide before, or you can also read um, a, a lighter version of, of this uh, text if you read the Java doc of um, Java lang string intern. So there is a method intern, which I will use in an uh, example some minutes later. Okay, some minutes, it's now time uh, for demo. Um, So I've done some tests, and the first tests are um, copy paste Maven. Uh, the first tests are uh, simple pool tests, and I show you here the tests. So these two string literals are the same because this is by specification. This is a reference. I'm sorry. Um, this is a reference uh, to this literal, as well as this is a reference to this literal. So these both references point to the same pool instance, to the same singleton inside the JVM. And there was written uh, constant expressions. And constant, constant expressions are, for example, uh, made like that. There is a plus sign, and um, two parts are joined. And this is a constant expression. And these con constant expressions are also the same. And even if you concat different parts, but the result is the same, also these constant expressions are same are the same, are the singleton. But um, this is not a constant expression. It's an expression with variables. So these two expressions are not same inside the JVM. So these are two different instances. They are, of course, equals, but they are not same. But constant expression mean not only um, literal expressions like that, but also if I change the variable declaration to a constant expression with the final keyword, it's also the same. So these two references are the same. In the um, Java doc of, of um, the intern method of, of the class string, there is written how interning works. And so you can intern not only if the literal gets loaded into the, VV, uh, into the JVM via the, the class loading mechanism, but you can also call the intern method um, explicitly. So um, these two intern strings are also the same. 
if you create something on the heap and new the new constructor uh, call is always on the heap if you create something on the heap they are of course equals but they are not the same okay so um now as you learned that um intern strings are singletons there may be a good idea to to um, um, to test uh, for equality via the equals equals operator because um, an equals operator must be much more uh, faster than um, a method call for equals so this is not true in general this is not true in general um, because you have to intern it so before you can um, compare it via equals equals operator you have to call the intern method which will will um, need some cpu for you so eventually it will not be uh, faster for that so at these times we we are doing microservices and you will read uh, many strings uh, via json uh, or uh, generate strings via json and uh, these strings are created on the heap and they will uh, gar garbage collected uh, some seconds after so there is no need to intern that but if you have uh, many 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 strings um, on the heap which will not be garbage collected in the next minutes so it's eventually a good idea to to intern it so you can you have to try it you have to measure it before you have to measure it afterwards and um, then you can decide uh, is it a good idea to do it or not how is this pool implemented it is implemented in c c++ so it's uh, inside the jvm uh, it's not uh, implemented in in um, java so it's not a, a hash table or a hash map as as we know it so um the strings itself reside on the heap but uh, the table itself um, is implemented in um, c c++ in uh, native memory and um, probably you have some education in, in in computer science and eventually you have learned that hash table bucket sizes uh, should be prime and um, before java 7 the bucket size was 1009 afterwards it became uh, 60,013 and uh, since java 11 it's uh, uh, 65,563 which is of course not prime so don't ask me i don't know so um they decided to have um, to use this this uh, value and there it is okay so most of you will not use um, java 6 um, or lower so probably you're younger so you don't uh, get it that the permanent genera generation has moved to the meta space uh, in in java 7 so the um, out of memory exception uh, in former times uh, were in in different memory spaces so if you want to fine tune something about uh, this hash table you have first to look uh, how many strings reside inside the hash table and inside your heap so there is um, one of the about 50 um, binaries inside the jdk uh, there is a jmap um, executable with uh, a parameter minus heap and you can look at the heap how many strings are uh, in the heap you can also print some um, string table statistics there is a jvm uh, flag uh, print table statistics and you can if you're not happy with um, six, uh, 65,000, you and want to have a, a lower or bigger uh, size you can um, change the string size table on startup so it's written in c it's not as dynamic as uh, we are used to in java so it's um, created at, pr at uh, jvm start one time and uh, this value um, is set okay so um the open jdk engineers are really really smart guys and they did some really impressive things but uh mistakes can happen so this is original code from uh former um, jdk release 
And um, at these times, inside the string class, there were two fields, offset and count. And they were used, for example, in substring. So if a substring gets computed, uh, the backing array was not created, but the backing array points to the original string. And uh, offset and count was adjusted so that the substring was the substring of the original string. But um, this can lead to a, a performance uh, to a memory leak because the original string, the big one, can't be garbage collected because uh, you, you don't use it anymore. So usually the garbage collector uh, can take it away, but this that didn't happen because um, the the substring is still pointed points to the to the original string. So this was a memory leak, and so um, the offset and count field uh, was uh, removed in Java seven. So this isn't part of the string implementation anymore. Okay, so now we are finished with. Um, string pool and um, interning strings. So next heading is uh, compact strings. Java started as an internet language. So they decided in 1995, or maybe they started maybe three times um, before they, the release date. So in 1992 to have uh, not ASCII code, the older one will remember seven or eight bit ASCII code. So they decided to define the Java char data type to have 16 bits and use Unicode, Unicode standard. So if you look inside uh, the string class, this is original code ins including uh, the, the comment. This is uh, original code uh, from an older string implementation. So there is uh, a value field, which is an array of character. But with Java 5, it was decided to use Unicode 4 as a standard um, encoding of um, characters in Java. And there are some um, encodings in, in um, Unicode 4 that requires four bytes. So there are characters which cannot be encoded in 16 bits, in two bytes. So what, what, what to do? So they can change the character data type, which is not a good idea because of compatibility. So what they decided, they, they invented supplementary characters. And supplementary characters are a pair of char values. And you can read it in um, the, uh, the Java doc of Javalang uh, character that this uh, really takes place. And uh, if you look, for example, in, um, in some um, older Java doc uh, 5, in Java doc 5, um, the length method of uh, the string class returns the number of 16 bit Unicode characters. The Java 6 Java doc says that um, the, length na uh, the length method returns the number of Unicode code units. So at this point, um, almost all strings will need two bytes to, represent, to be represented in a string. But there are also some Far East uh, characters which need four bytes. But probably all of you are European or American guys, so um, we all for, for us, uh, so it will be sufficient to, to use um, 8 bits to use ASCII. So um, this was the birth of JEP254 compact strings. And I'm not sure if, if you know about uh, JDK enhancement proposals. JDK enhancement proposals are um, published at um, jdk.org, I know, uh, I think. And there is also some writing, um, there is a title, and there are some, some people mentioned there. And uh, there is also a summary. And the summary is um, the, the 
the goal of compact strings is a more space efficient internal representation for strings. And um, as I said before, compatibility is, is very important for Java. So um, if you decide to, to use one byte, you cannot change some, some Java API. This is forbidden by, by definition of Java. So um, they have to, to do different things. So the motivation is if all of the strings which need at the time um, two bytes per character eventually in the future will need one byte per character we leave uh, we, we we save much uh, memory so this is um, the motivation behind uh, compact strings and they did it they did it with java 9 so the first line was uh, the writing of uh, java 8 and before the value was a character array and after 9, 9 plus, uh, the value field is a byte array. And they also changed the, the bracket writing of, of the array definition. So value brackets is the C style of writing uh, array definitions and uh, the type uh, with, with uh, brackets is the, array, uh, the Java style of array writing. So Java allows both uh, writings, but uh, the second is um, the more Java-like writing. And th this is also original um, comment. There is an additional field coder, and this coder has two uh, values, Latin 1 and UTF-16. So um, there is uh, a flag uh, which says this value array consists of one or two byte characters. If four byte characters are used, um, the implementation will know it because they are um, this is a pair of of, 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 of two bytes um, of two bytes, but um, it will apparent of, of the writing that um, the character is uh, four bytes um, in length. Okay, and for me as a software professor, this is a masterpiece of software engineering. So eventually, some one of you moved older programs written in Java 8 or 7 or 6 or 5 to 9, 10, 11. And no one does recognize that the internal representation of strings has changed. And this is uh, a, really, uh, a really big thing, I think. Okay, so it's the default. So since Java 9, only one byte is used for European or uh, English or languages like, like, like that. But um, if you have some problems, you can um, turn it off and use the minus uh, compact string flag to use uh, two bytes per character. Okay, we also have to verify this. So five tests, I will not show all the tests to you. So um, this is a simple uh, Latin A. And um, it, it is one code unit long. And um, it's also one code point count long. This is um, a reflection method um, getting the bytes of the backing value field. And um, it's a byte array, as, as you already know now, and it's uh, one byte long. Though this is, I think it's Czech, but I don't know it really. So this is... Um, some so in Unicode it's mentioned like small Latin Latin small character s with acute. So there is some 
human reading for, for each, each yet letter in the Unicode symbol table. So um, this is also um, the code unit length is one, but the bytes to represent is two because uh, it's not uh, representable in, in, um, in one byte. And there is some very special, I cannot pronounce it, I don't know what it is. Um, there is some very, very special sign inside um, some Unicode um, encoding. And um, the length is two. The code point count is one, because it's one code point. But um, it consists out of four, four bytes in sum. So, uh, compact strings. Okay, so um, to repeat, OpenJDK's, OpenJDK uh, engineers are really, really smart guys, but they tried it before. They tried something in JDK 6, which, which was called uh, compressed strings, but they didn't implement it um, on the value array, but they implement um, two implementing classes for, for the string implementation, two implementing classes for string buffer, two implementing classes for uh, string builder, and so on. And um, Alexei Shipilev is a very uh, famous uh, OpenJDK engineer. Uh, he mentioned that this implementation is limited by design, error-prone, pro and hard to maintain. So they decide in um, Java 7 to revoke. So compressed strings are not included, compact strings are included. So um, they take it out of, of the JDK. Next heading, string, dedupli string deduplication, sorry. So it works only in G1. So if you're using another uh, garbage collector, it will not work. It's only G1. And um, there's, of course, uh, a JEP192. And um, the idea is that um, if strings reside on the heap, the string pool are uh, consists of, of out of singletons, but on the heap there may be duplicates. And um, the idea is that duplicate instances of strings are automatically and continuously deduplicated. And of course, um, the motivation behind is avoid wasting memory and reduce the memory footprint, as always. Okay, how does it work? So we have um, some, some variables, string one, string two. They point to, to heap instances of, of string, and the string instances have uh, the, the value field and the coder field, and the value field points to some uh, byte array. So what, what um, will happen if we intern this? So if we intern this, string one and string two will point to the same singleton. String deduplication um, doesn't work like interning. String deduplication um, deduplicates the backing array. So one array uh, is taken away, and the second array points now to the to the first array. So um, then this was back and forth. So this is what they did. So not the string reference but the value reference points uh, to the same instance. Oh, I'm good in time. Um, so to recap, this will only work with G1. You have to use it. You have to, to start your VM uh, and say, please use uh, string deduplication. And the, the, the flag is use string deduplication. It's available since many versions, since Java 8 update 20. And there was, there was um, a flag to, to print uh, statistics of how many strings get deduplicated. 
it was print string deduplication statistics, but this was removed uh, with Java 9. Now uh, you have to substitute this simple flag with a much more complicated flag, I think. So it's like this. Uh, so I have to use it. I don't know why they did it, but um, it was done. Okay, we can also check this. So I have to copy and run it. And um, I also print some statistics, so this uh, doesn't matter. And um, so what I did is I create strings on the heap, so not in turn strings. They are of course equals, they are not in turn, um, and they are not the same because the array reference is different. So I have to call the garbage collector, I have to call, call it, um, if I call it one time, so this test is from time to time, from time to time not uh, repeatable. So I have to, uh, I don't know why, but I have to call it um, at least two or three times. So for, um, to be secure, I, I called it three times now. And um, so the strings are not the same. They are not interned. So string one and string two in the, example before, still points to different uh, string implementation objects on the heap, but um, the value references are the same. So they point to the same uh, byte array on the heap. So the string was really deduplicated. Okay, there was a case study. So if you download uh, the slides, um, all the magenta colored um, text is, is a, a link into the net. So you can uh, read this, this blog entry. So there was a case study with uh, Eclipse IDE and they report uh, about um, a decrease heap usage about 10%. Heinz Kabutz uh, has a blog entry. He, um <coughs> sorry, he uh, reported a decrease in heap um, usage about 25%. Uh, percent. Okay, so the last point is um, indefine string concatenation. So my, my English is not so good. So I, I check my dictionary, what is indefi? And um, my, my dictionary has no entry about indefi. So I start some, some Google search and I ended with a dictionary. So, um, Java programming Java change a particular functionality to use invoke dynamic calls. So Java has changed the world. We have changed English language. We created a new word. So uh, Java has um, changed a new word in Define. Um, it's written as the Jap here uh, shows uh, in Define string concatenation. So what is indefi string concatenation? What is invoke dynamic? So if you concat strings in your um, source code, plus sign. So this gets um, co uh, compiled to some string buffer append uh, bytecode. But now if you um, think about your Hibernate implementation, which was, com was compiled with Java 5, 15 years ago, and now you execute it in your um, JVM version 20. So you still use the bytecode the compiler uh, invented 10 or 15 years ago. And the idea here is that eventually a newer JVM has some mechanism to use much more efficient string concatenation. So the idea is to use invoke dynamic to, to get in some later time an improvement. And this is really 
really remarkable. Okay, so uh, behind the scenes, what they did is they removed the string buffer append chain of, of uh, method calls to some invoke dynamic calls to some methods inside string concat factory in a new class. So this was um, so this was implemented with uh, Java 9. So if you want to use the Java P decompiler, this one, you have to compile it with 8 and then with 9 or 10. And then you can look at the bytecode with Java P and you will see that string buffer append gets, gets replaced by um, invoke dynamic of um, some of the methods in string concat factory. And this is also uh, worth to, to remember. String concat factory is used as bootstrap method to invoke dynamic call sites to support string concatenation feature of the Java programming language. So this is, it's a public class. It is not invented to use by us, by developers. It's in, um, defined to be used by the compiler and some JVM at runtime to concat strings. So there are only, I think there are only two, two methods inside this class. Um, it's only to be used as a compile target, not as something to be used by us. So I think really remarkable. Okay. So, and I mentioned um, in the introduction that th these OpenJDK engineers improve it from release to release to release, and it will never stop. It will never stop. So, there was some uh, tweet that um, string hash code gets some six times improvement, not six percent, but six times improvement. And it was uh, January this year. And uh, Heinz Kabutz uh, did some measuring for string format in the, with the release of Java 17. And he reported that uh, the format method is three times faster in Java 17 to compared to, to Java 16. So it goes on and it will go on and it will go, will go on in the future. So I'm finished. I have, you, I have told you something about intern strings. I have told you about compact strings and compressed strings. So compressed strings has failed. They are, they are, it's, it's removed. It's not available. I've told you some information about string deduplication. And I told you about identify string concatenation. So I'm really in time, so eventually there is uh, time for a question, but eventually we will also uh, download the code or, or the slides. So um, thank you very much. Do you have some questions? No questions at all? So the, the nice thing about this is we don't have to use it. They do it for us. So the JDK our programs get faster and faster and faster. We'll use less memory, less memory, less memory, and we don't have to do anything. So that's all. Thank you very much.